Bota acted like Igboho was his property, but Benin disappointed him. Igboho's counsel. Kelimi Ola Jengbesi, a prominent member of the legal team of Yoruba Nation, Aditator Sunday Ademo, aka Sunday Igboho, speaks before the court in Benin Republic among related issues. It is over three weeks since the raid by the DSS on the Ibadan home of your client, Chief Sunday Igboho. Uh, the 12 of his associates are arrested and detained by the DSS in Abuja, still alive. And the reply was, yes, we believe they are alive. Information go to us confidentially that they are going through difficult times in humane treatment. The lady among them has not changed her clothes for the past 20 days. It is a sordid tale and we can't even say all of these things in public because we, but we know that they are alive. The DSS cannot kill anyone in his custody. It is not possible. Nigeria has not got to that level. You think so? <laughs> we believe that they are alive because the DSS came out to say they have them in custody and that they are still investigating. The Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday ordered that the DSS should produce these 12 persons. Are you still optimistic that the DSS will obey the court order? Yes, we are very optimistic um, until proven otherwise. The reason is because Nigeria is governed by constitution and we are all under the law. And there is no arm or agency of government that is above the law. So we are very optimistic that, that the DSS will obey the court order and ensure that the proper thing is done. These people that are in DSS custody are Nigerian citizens and they are entitled to all the privileges enshrined in the Nigerian constitution of 1999. And so we expect the DSS to abide by the provisions of the law, but if the DSS does not comply and obey the court, we are going to swing into action and take up contempt proceeding against the DSS, particularly the DG of DSS, Yusuf Bichi, and it would be shocking to Nigerians if the DG of DSS, who is supposed to respect and protect the law, ends up in jail. Your clients have been in DSS custody for over three weeks without being given access to their lawyers. What do you think about this? This is a sad commentary on the country's democracy. What the DSS is doing is simply making efforts to create a crime where none exists. They know that if these people are allowed to meet with their lawyers, there would be no opportunity for them to manipulate facts. The DSS denied them access to legal representation, and this is against the law. We are going to take up the DSS on this. This is because there is a need for us to clearly spell out the operations and the organs of the government and their duties within the precinct of the law. The DSS cannot be a creation of the law and yet disrespects the law. So I think that they deny them access to legal representation because the DSS has something to hide. What do you think the DSS has to hide? They are hiding a lot of things. This is a government that is frustrated. The Nigerian people have actually lost confidence in the government and the government is trying to regain the confidence but it is doing it in the wrong way. The government thinks that the best way to instill confidence in the people is by attacking opposition, by attacking those against the government. This is the reason the DSS came after Chief Sunday Buhu. I also believe that this is the reason the DSS denied these people the opportunity to meet their lawyers. It is simply an illegality. Before the raid on the Buhu house on July 1st, 2021, are you aware if your client received any notice or invitation from the DSS? Before the raid, there was no single invitation from the DSS, be it by phone or by letter, inviting Chief Sunday Igboho. He was invited under, or if he was invited under the law, he would have honored the invitation, but he never was invited. I do not think the intention of the DSS was to arrest Chief Sunday Igboho. The intention was to take him out because the event that took place before his house was invaded, not democratic. It was not normal. There is nowhere in the world where security agents raid in such a manner and have the audacity to say that two people were killed in the process. This government, particularly the leadership of the DSS, would have to account for these things. Igboho went on the ground after the raid until news broke out that he was arrested in Kotunu, Benin Republic, on the night of 19th of July. Why didn't your client surrender to the DSS after he was declared wanted? There was an attempt to harm him. And his own wisdom, uh, he felt the best way for him was to seek a refuge. What is his crime? What was his crime? He demanded that there should be protection for the Yoruba people against some criminal Flani herdsmen who were killing people. The entire Flani people can't be said to be criminals, but there are some set of people who are killing people on their farms. 
He complained about it when the killing was becoming too much, kidnapping and was becoming a profession. And he wanted the Nigerian government to address it, but the Nigerian government refused. And she said if the Nigerian government could not protect the Yoruba people in their land, the Yoruba people should have their own nation. He started a campaign for self-determination and then the government invaded his house, destroyed his property and declared him wanted. They wanted to take him down because the raid on his house, by the, but by the grace of God, he was able to leave the place and find refuge elsewhere. It is not wrong for any prisoner of conscience, for any political prisoner to take refuge anywhere in the world. It is an international standard. Would you want to tell us the number of days your clients stayed in Nigeria before escape to Benin Republic? These are security issues and I don't want to go into that. Key question. Others have been, you know, flowing, making sense answers, but this is a very key question that could turn around. And of course, being his legal representative, he cannot just open his mouth and start blabbing. Understand? So yes, if he, say, if he says the date, because he was attacked on the 1st of July and was arrested in Kotonu. Um, oh no, he wasn't arrested. He was in Kotonu on the 19th of July. So the question is, that timing, when did he get to Kotonu? Um, where was he hiding? Let's say, if, let's say halfway through he was in Nigeria, halfway was in Kotonu. Where did he stay? Where did he hide? Because he would have had to have left um, his vicinity. Ah, what state is he from? I don't know, but he, had, he would have to have left his state and then, because let me even, let me even actually, what am I even saying? Benin Republic shares a border with Nigeria, I think. Let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just check. Um, I'm looking at maps right now um, because again it's like everything is it's going to be so suspicious so um, Benin is not far absolutely not it's the we should share a border with Benin and you know um, so he didn't really get that far you know and, and I guess that's a good thing it's just if the government had given out orders that do not let this man leave the country how do you then allow him to leave then the borders must not be tight and that already oh, speaks bad of the government because every single day they were giving out orders and it was just non-stop. So it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very odd. Um, so yeah, I mean, this question is literally a turnaround question because if he should give a date, he's done for absolutely 100%. Um, it is what it is right now. Um, put what I think about this in the comment section below. And do not forget to like and subscribe.